We simply cannot buy victory in Iraq. This year has been the bloodiest year in the history of the war. More Americans killed in 2007 than any other year of this long, long war. In fact, every dollar we spend in Iraq comes at the expense of our critical needs here at home. Today's report that Chairman Schumer will talk about is a reminder that the full costs of this war to our economy are manifested in ways that have never been accounted for by this administration. In fact, ignored by this administration. We're funding this war with borrowed money. We are borrowing the money. We're borrowing the money from Saudi Arabia, China, Japan, Mexico. I was in California over the weekend. Gas over $4 a gallon in California. It will take decades for our military to recover from the damage that it's, has been caused by this war. Our equipment has been destroyed. It's in a state of disrepair in many instances. And General Casey, head of the Army, has indicated how beleaguered the Army is. We know that the immense federal budget costs for the war are putting us more and more into debt, and that's financed by borrowing. The hidden costs of the Iraq war take into account the full costs stemming from that excessive borrowing, the instability in world oil markets, the future care of injured veterans, the necessary retooling of our military, and other factors. The backbreaking cost of this war to American families, the federal budget, and the entire economy are beyond measure in many ways. The cost of the war is becoming the $800 billion gorilla in the room when it comes to opposition to the war. It is becoming the first thing that people mention after the loss of life when they're opposed to this war, and the people who mention it, many of them are not people who were against the war in the past. While we in Congress have been fighting for a significant change, of course, in the President's policy, the JEC report estimates the total economic costs double what the administration has spent on Iraq alone in direct dollars. That is nearly $1.3 trillion. And of course, when you add in Afghanistan, it gets very close to $1.6 trillion. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street, and there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe, and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. So, I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore!